Uh, hi, everyone. This is Country Music News International. My name's Nigel Shah, and the lovely lady on the other side of the big pond is Pamela McNeil, singer-songwriter from Minnesota and currently in Minnesota. So now you know. But she wasn't always in Minnesota. She spent a few years actually in my uh, home country in sunny England and uh, performed there with a guy called Rick Astley. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I actually live in uh, Germany, by the way, but I'm from London in England originally. And so I have to ask you, how did you get hooked up with Rick Astley? Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, that is a good story. Um, well, I had met an English guy who was in a band at the time, very popular band and moved to England to be with him. And, um, uh, we were, the, the short story is we were backstage at a Fleetwood Mac show at Wembley, at okay. Wembley arena. And it was the time that Lindsay Buckingham had quit the band. So it was Billy Burnett and Rick Vito yeah. with them. And I'm a huge Fleetwood Mac fan. So we were backstage and hanging out. And this woman came up to me named Debbie Haxton. And she owned a company called The Session Connection. And so Debbie would put people on tour with Pink Floyd and whoever was touring from England. She would, she um, you know, would get people their gigs, basically. And she came up to me and said, I understand that you're a singer. And I said, yes, I am. And she said, I might have some work for you. I was like, great, you know, not knowing what was going to happen. And the next day she called me and she said, Rick Astley's uh, Lauren was her name, girl that sang and danced, had just left to join a group called Bross. Okay. Now, in the rest of the world, nobody knew who Bross was, but, you know, they were huge at the time in the 80s, you know, and um, they're looking for a new singer dancer. And are you interested? I said, sure. So I was sent down to uh, PWL Studios, the Pete Waterman, yeah, yeah. Stockig and Waterman. And he basically walked in the room. We said a couple words and he said, okay, yeah, you got the gig if you want. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And the next week I was singing back up with Rick at Royal Albert Hall. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it was as, crazy. You know? As one does, yeah. As one does, you know, and then, um, and he was lovely. I mean, Rick was just, you know, a lovely bloke and just a great guy. And um, every band on his team was great. And, and you know, then I probably was with him for around a year and did video and different. We did the Royal Variety performance that year. Yeah. We did Wogan, not Wogan. We did Top of the Pops. I was with him at a Wogan interview, but I wasn't on TV. And I mean, all kind, of, you know, just all kinds, a little bit of his tour. And um, so that was a really, really cool now that I look back, like a really cool part of my life yeah. to kind of be in that scene at the time. So that's my story. <laughs> yeah. Well, that takes me back uh, a little bit. Yeah. When I grew up on programs like Top of the Pops. Right. Let's yeah, let's get to you and your music. Let's leave Rick Astley behind. <laughs> still going though, Rick. Oh, he's, he's doing great. Yeah. Um, his new album is actually really good. And he yeah. like played most of it and wrote. I mean, he's he, you know, he actually wrote a lot of the stuff back in the day too, or co-wrote it and nobody, they didn't really tell us that. And, you know, and he, he's, he was a smart, smart cookie. So let's get to you. Wave After Wave is your kind of new EP. I think EP is right, isn't it? Um, right. Six songs. Six songs. Yeah. Now I've been listening to some of these because I always like to have a listen through and see if I can kind of, you know, do I have a favorite? So I do. So um, I'm going to tell you, uh, Needle and Vinyl. I've got this actually on my other screen here. I've been playing this all afternoon. Um, needle and Vinyl. So I'm going to have a, kind of assume that you've written all these songs because you are a songwriter. I know you write a right. lot. Yeah. Um, and you're also a piano player or a keyboard player. Right. So one of the other things I've been doing is watching some videos of some slightly older material i'm going to say slightly because we're only talking about two or three years ago and there's you sitting in a grand piano tinkling the ivories i must say you look very comfortable sat at a piano do you actually really enjoy playing the piano 
Oh, I really do. I mean, for many years, I think it was one of my best friends, you know, and so I play, I picked it up by ear when I was a kid, like really like, you right. know, five, six. And then I, I took actual lessons and my grandma lived next door and she had a Hammond organ with all the pedals. Wow. So I got to practice on that too. So I was pretty fluent in organ and piano. And, you know, I just, I love the keyboard. It's, um, I don't know. I just have always loved it. It's felt very natural to me. So it's been, uh, it's been, I don't always, I don't always play it on stage because I like to be up front too. And just, you know, but I, I'll usually have like a station where I can sit down and play some songs and get up and, you know, but yeah, I do love it. Yeah. It shows actually, you just seem very, as I say, you just seem very comfortable. So the piano. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's interesting that you said before, you know, you've always liked um, Fleetwood Mac because that did kind of, just slightly remind me, not not the music so much, but I always remember Christine McVie sat at the piano. It was the same kind of vibe yeah. for me. She always looked very happy playing the piano. Yeah, and I mean that was that was her instrument and her her. I mean, obviously, she was a phenomenal pop songwriter. I mean, she yeah. wrote some, some beautiful um, pieces and with, with the piano, and you can tell with the piano with her kind of shiny, happier, kind of sweet. I don't know. It just, it just really came through, but she definitely was, you know, that was, it was an extension of her, I think the piano or the yeah. keys. But there was a solo album that she brought out, the name of which now escapes me, but I've played that to death because the songs on it are great. I mean, it's really, it's like you say, it's really, really good songwriting. You know, there's a lot of melody in there. Right. Which and... I love the kind of uh, the voicing of the chords and all that kind of stuff. Lovely, lovely jubbly, as I used to say. So do you actually have any specific kind of influences, people that you love to listen to when you were kind of learning how to play? Yeah, I went through different phases. So, I mean, for me, I mean, Fleetwood Mac were my, and Stevie Nicks were, you know, pretty much, the highest level. But I also, around the time I was in England and when I was really starting to really write, I was really a big Peter Gabriel, Kate Bush, mm. um, you know, the, the water boys were a huge influence on me. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of people like that were, were really important at the time. And then I got into more like, you know, the, I guess I'd call it alt country. They call it that here, like Lucinda Williams, and, you know, people like Tom Patty, of course. And um, so I think those were some major influence on me. Uh, I, Tom Patty, because he could make it simple. And, you know, his lyrics were so perfect for, you know, he just was, it's it, it deceptively simple. You know, everybody thinks it's easy. If it was that easy to write great songs like that, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. But he his his uh his lesson in songwriting is is to me really one of the one of the best. Um going back to your songwriting, I mean, do you have a specific process? I mean, you know, different people have different ways of doing yeah. it. Do you kind of automatically sit yourself down at the piano? and start thrashing away? Well, um, that's a good question. When I first started writing, which really was when I was living in England back in the 80s, I mean, I'd written a little bit before, but um, I always started with a title and I would have a notebook full of titles. And I would, and I liked writing uh, with a title first because it gave me a destination. So I was like, okay, I would look at the notebook and I go, I don't, I don't feel this one, but then sometimes a title would stick out and I would lay like, Oh yeah, that's what I'm feeling this one today. I just, I, I felt like an energy around it, you know, it just was ringing for me. So I would, I'm going to write this song today. And then, like I said, it gives you a destination and you go, okay, how am I going to get to this? What am I going to say? And maybe you kind of have somewhat of an idea, but that's how I used to write all the time. And I, I still do once in a while, if I get a great title or I, or like, there's something, there's an energy in these words, you know, I want to go there. But um, sometimes, you know, like during the pandemic, um, we had just, my husband and I had just got a beautiful white baby grand piano who I named Pearl. <laughs> and he said, you know, you need to have one. Cause he knew when I was a kid, we had an upright and I, I loved to play piano and I hadn't 
for so many years because I've been, you know, with my Pro Tools set up and my keyboards and whatever. So we had just gotten this lovely um, piano. And then, and I had been doing like 150 shows a year, you know, and all of a sudden the pandemic happens and you're just, Ooh. you stop yeah. dead in your tracks. It was really hard for me. And I had, and I didn't even for that year or two, I didn't even go in my, I have a writing room studio, didn't even go in there. I just used Pearl, my piano. And I wrote the album before this one, um, Neon Lightning. I wrote everything mm -hmm. old school on piano. And that's probably one of the videos, Hollywood Rain, that you saw where, where I'm sitting at yeah, the, exactly. the piano. And um, and I just said, I'm going to do it old school. And I'm going to just write like this. And then I said, I want to go into the studio. And I want we all, all to play live and, and do it like, because I never got a chance to do that. So it sort of pushed me in this different direction. So I wrote like that. But most of the time, I'll start a, a new Pro Tools session and I'll have an idea where I'm going. Maybe I've, maybe I've fleshed out a song on the piano and now I'm going to go, you know, kind of give it a feel. Or I'll start with sometimes with just like a um, a drum loop or something that I f I'm feeling or, yeah. So I don't really have any set way. I have like a, a kind of all kinds of different ways and I just kind of let myself go there. And I don't know if you're the same way, but I take my iPhone and I sing a lot of ideas into it. And then when I have time, I'm like, okay, I'm, I listen through and it's as much as a surprise for me as, yeah. you know, things like, oh yeah, I really like this or this is, oh, I didn't know I wrote that, you know? And so then I, then I can take it and flesh it out as it were. So I have kind of all kinds of different ways these days, but I did start with a title back in the day. So, well, all the best for the rest of this year. Hope everything goes well with the gigs and Christmas and all the rest of it. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you over here and get to talk to you again. I would love it. And thank you so much for having me on. This has been a blast. <laughs> Our pleasure. So I will wave you goodbye and goodbye. click on my little red button. Bye. Bye-bye.